There's a lot of different roof and wall systems you can choose from, and one of those systems is insulated metal panels. And today, by the end of this video, you'll learn what they are, where we see them used in the industry, and where you can get them from and choose them for your project. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel and welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe if you're new, we release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we're talking about insulated metal panels, what they are, where you can get them and if you should choose them for your project and considerations there. I have Jeff Hawk, Technical Director from Sheffield Metals with me. Jeff, thanks for being here. Um, we're gonna talk about insulated metal panels. So why don't you tell me first of all, you know, what are they? What are they made of and, 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 and uh, kind of explain that process for me. Okay, so uh, an insulated metal panel is, is a lot different than what we deal with, uh, you know, it's a single skin panel. Uh, so it's basically two pieces of metal with a sandwiched foam core. So you have metal on the exterior side, you'd have metal on the interior side, and then you'd have uh, a foam core, um, varying thicknesses, um, basically in the center of that panel. They're going to be a lot thicker than a standing, typical standing seam roof panel is, um, and they go on a lot of different ways. So tell me a couple of reasons why someone might want to consider an insulated metal panel for their roof or wall. Okay, so I guess the biggest thing is um, since it has the foam core already installed and it is a vapor barrier, it is an air, a water barrier, you could put up a wall very quick or you could put on a roof very quick. There's not a lot of different pieces of components. Uh, you don't have the assemblies that have, again, multiple things that go into it. Um, you have your structural supports. You put this insulated metal panel up, you're, you're done. So probably the biggest benefit that I see is, is how fast you can get a, a, the walls or a roof on a building um, in one, one step. So, I mean, it's going to go up a lot faster than a typical assembly and, um, you know, and other times people want to use it is, uh, you know, they are very energy efficient. Um, you know, they have a very dense closed cell foam core and, uh, you know, that usually provides a better R value than say, uh, you know, glass fiber insulation uh, in a lot smaller package. So highly energy efficient and very fast and easy to install. What types of buildings do you normally see insulated metal panels on? Commercial, residential? Tell me about that. Uh, normally, I'd say typically is uh, commercial projects, um, but you can use them on a variety of different types of commercial projects. They could be used on anything from airplane hangers to uh, religious facilities to schools. You know, it's it's not necessarily just you know what you would think of like an industrial type project. You know, they're 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 used anywhere that you need something fast and and that's again going to be highly energy efficient. Those those are you know two of the huge main benefits to an IM insulated metal panel or IMP as they're, as they're called in the industry. I don't think there's a limited use for them. Um, I think they, they could be used probably more places than not. Is there a variety of looks that you can get uh, from different manufacturers? Do they come in different colors or are they uh, pretty standard? Oh no, there's a, there's a lot of different things um, that they offer. Uh, so you can get a number one, I mean, they could be installed horizontally or vertically on a wall system. So, I mean, right there, can really change up the look just by how they're installed. Um, you know, another thing is that, you know, they can either be a smooth surface where the panel is completely flat. Uh, it can have corrugations in it, uh, deeper, wider to different, give it different looks. Um, some manufacturers even provide it where it looks like it has a concrete coating or a stucco coating, if that's the look that you're going for. So, um, you know, again, and if it's, if it's painted, obviously, you know, all the different colors of the rainbow that you could think of. So there's there's a ton of options when it comes down to the look uh, and the style of the IMP that you're uh, trying to get. What about performance? Is there performance limitations? What about their longevity? Talk to me about that. The skins on the outside, the metal on the outside is made out of steel or aluminum. So you do, again, have that metal longevity um, and performance. Uh, as far as the paint, different types of paints are used but you know a popular one that you see a lot of is the pvdfs that we talk about all the time so you get the performance there so and as far as the testing goes i mean it's tested in accordance with all the all the typical astms and ul requirements uh, they do a lot of different testing on the core as well 
as far as humidity, density, things like that, showing that the core is not going to break down over time. You know, it's tested for uplifts, it's tested for air, it's tested for water, it's tested for fire. So it goes through all the same rigid testing that you would typically see in a, in a metal product. What's the installation like of those panels? How are they actually, you know, installed on a wall or roof? They're installed over a framing system. It's usually 16 gauge purlins um, from everything that I've seen. Uh, one Again, one of the benefits about it is that, you know, 16 gauge purlins, you, you talk about a single skin panel. Those purlins typically have to be a lot closer than they would be uh, with an insulated metal panel. Uh, usually that framing system can be anywhere from, it could span anywhere from 8 to 12 feet. Uh, where typically in a, in a in a single student system you're anywhere from one to five, so uh, I guess that's another benefit as well the cost of your structural framing and things like that. Uh, but it's either installed uh, most most of them that I've seen either are uh, tongue and groove style or they have a lap like a typical uh, mechanically seen panel would, and then it's held down using either a clip or a concealed fastener a concealed fastener system or uh, an exposed fastener system, but uh, a lot of the ones I see use, use some type of a concealed clip to attach to the framing system. If you have an R value specified by an architect, is there a variety of options that you can get as far as thicknesses for the metal panels that you can uh, match that or uh, make sure you match that specification? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, typically, you'd see the IMPs come in anywhere from two to six inches thick. And again, since it's using a, most of the options that I see are a polyurethane or polyiso uh, and and then i have seen mineral wool as well but i see typically the polyurethane more and since it's a denser foam type product uh, you're going to get a lot more r value in a thinner space so if i have a commercial project uh, what lengths and widths are available how does that work with my building so what i see standard for width wise is usually 32 to 44 inches um it's a pretty wide panel uh, considering and lengths since they are factory formed uh, I believe they come in standard sizes around 8 to 50 feet uh, you get into that uh, issue with factory form panels of you know only being able to have a panel as long as a truck you can carry it on so that's that's typical from what I've seen uh, that's being offered out there what about cost talk to me about you know overall what's the cost differences between IMPs and another like single skin metal system Obviously, actual numbers are going to depend on, you know, the manufacturer you're dealing with and, and steel prices and whatnot. But um, an insulated metal panel is going to be considerably more expensive than um, a single skin panel. And, and rightly so when you think about it. Uh, obviously, you have an exterior and interior. It's finished. And then you have the insulation core. Um, and insulation is usually more expensive than the metal itself when it goes on a project. So it's going to be considerably more expensive, but um, if it's something you're interested, I say you look at your bottom line compared to what the initial cost of the IMP is compared to the total cost of the whole assembly of what it is that you might be using as an alternate. And then again, uh, your structural framing, like we said, they can span longer distances. So you might be able to get away with not using as many structural members. And then obviously labor, if it goes up faster, uh, Obviously, the job's going to get done faster. That means that there's going to be less labor hours on the project as well. So initially up front, that IMP is going to be considerably more expensive than, say, a typical roof or wall product. But when you look at it as a whole, um, it's probably pretty comparable. So if I have a project, where can I find insulated metal panels? You know, a, a few of the manufacturers, this definitely isn't a complete list, but, you know, off the top of my head, uh, MBCI manufactures insulated metal panels, uh, metal span, Kingspan, uh, Nucor, um, those are all pretty big names in the insulated metal panel industry. Um, and then honestly, I mean, a quick Google search, you'll see every every manufacturer out there that's available. But those are just the ones that off the top of my head. Are insulated metal panels tested for um, fire resistance? Tell me about that. They do have that insulation sandwiched in between the metal panels. Or is there testing for fire? Yeah, they absolutely do. And um, you know, one of the ones that I've, I've read about uh, includes a mineral wool insulation. And as we all know, mineral wool is a, a fire resistant product. Uh, and they have ratings from one hours to three hours. I think a lot of that comes into play too when you have uh, internal fire fire requirements. Um, 
to where you don't want the fire spreading from one portion of a building to another. Um, so if, if say the fire started inside, that's not necessarily keeping the fire from coming from outside. So yes, but they are, they are all tested. Um, and they all do have a, a fire rating that I can tell. Obviously it's going to depend on the manufacturer you're dealing with and uh, the type of product and the components that they're using to make the IMP, what type of fire rating they have. Most all the ones I've looked at have a, you know, minimum UL 790 fire rating, um, on their products. Are there any situations where you might consider using something other than insulated metal panels? When are they not good to use? So, so sometimes that IMPs might not be the uh, route to go is uh, residential projects. A lot of a lot of personal residences don't have the uh, the budget like that up front to afford those additional costs. Anywhere that you would like a continuous panel from eave to ridge or from wall to ceiling, maybe when uh, energy those real high energy performance requirements aren't needed um, or you can get away with using a different product to meet your energy performance requirements that um, you don't need in such a tight space. Those are, those are some examples of when an IMP might not be ideal. I have to imagine that a, a roof that's really cut up, uh, it would make it difficult to install insulated panels. Would you say that? Yeah, no, I will say that most of the time when I see uh, insulated panels installs, installed, um, it's a pretty straightforward project, you know, pretty flat walls, pretty, pretty straight roofs, not a whole lot of, uh, like you're talking about being cut up because again, you're going to have a lot of waste on the job. Uh, once you start getting into angles and things like that. So if you're cutting off a lot of part of your insulated metal panel, then that, that could cause a lot of extra costs that just aren't needed. Well, thanks Jeff. I hope you learned a little bit about insulated metal panels. If you have any more questions, comment down below. Love to talk with you. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.